friend, I'm Leela with Bodyworker.org, here to talk about some of the things I do in the yoga swing that make it easier to use. So um, the first thing we'll look at is the overall structural framework for your yoga swing. We'll look at how we install the swing on the framework, talk about what kind of clothing to wear, and then um, wrap up with a demo using some props in the swing. So um, first our structural framework. Um, I think that one of the reasons that instructions are not generally given or received when you buy a yoga swing is because everyone has a different way, a different installation needs. So, um, for the first installation we did, like in the house, we just have it in a wide doorway, which works well if you're doing static postures, and if that's all the space you have is a wide doorway. Um, it doesn't allow you to do a lot of movement, and it doesn't allow you to sway back and forth, which is are really nice things to be able to do in the swing. So. If you can go with more space, it's really recommended. The dimensions that I think work are 7 feet tall by 8 feet wide. So for this, um, the first installation we did outside was in a tree with lateral branch. And we just threw the uh, rope, we had got some extra rope, and then tied the the rope that came to the swing came with the swing into that extra rope, and that worked okay till lightning took that tree out. So then I built this structure, which is galvanized pipe, and it's cemented in the ground. The uh, this galvanized pipe is one and a half inch because that's what we had on hand, but I'd recommend two inch galvanized pipe for the greatest strength. This installation is taller than seven feet, but you really don't need to go taller than seven feet. Um, it's also wider than eight feet, but you don't really need to go wider than eight feet. In fact, the wider you go, um, the more stress and uh, the stronger it needs to be. It just be uh, best to keep it as narrow as you can. The reason I say eight feet is because you want to be able to expand, extend your arms and legs, and move in every direction without running into a, a pole or um, post. So from the, the installation, another thing that's important is what you put underneath your swing. And so what we came up with is a black rubber stall mat purchased from a farm supply store. It's easy to maintain. I, I leave it out here. It's left out here all the time because it's, it's heavy. Um, I just sweep it off or hose it off. And it's been here a couple years and it's really not showing any signs of wear. So I expect it to last a good while longer. Uh, let's talk about how we install the swing. So, um, like I mentioned before, you're going to throw your, wrap your extra rope or the rope that came with the swing around your beam or post, or if you're installing indoors, you might be um, hooking into eye hooks. So, you'll make that shoulder width apart. So, you can see here that the webbing, the rope, is about shoulder width apart for me. So if I was broader shouldered, I'd go wider, and narrower, I'd go narrower. But what you don't want is to be reaching out like in a wide V shape, and you don't want to be going narrow either with your arms. So uh, besides the width of the swing, the other thing that's important is the height of the swing. So the widest part of your hips is where you want the swing seat to drop down to. And we uh, find that by hooking in 
to the segment on the rope or webbing that came with your swing. So I'd like to show you another thing that's important is um, just keep your swing untwisted when you put it in, when you install it and install your hammock or the swing seat to the inside of the handles. So we have handles on the outside with the upper handle being the outermost handle and then we have our swing seat. So an option for installing and hooking into your webbing is to use climbing carabiners. So you could what this would do is make your swing a little bit longer. Let's say you had um, ju just enough rope, and you but you wanted it to be a little bit longer. You could hook in with the carabiner, and that's going to drop the level of the seat just a bit. The other thing is if um, using the carabiners could be nice if you're moving your swing around quite a bit. And uh, then you just have one hook. It's easier to carry your swing and the handles together. So uh, the swings that I'm familiar with are made out of nylon parachute fabric material. So this fabric is quite durable and it, I like that it's machine washable. You'll want to wash your swing uh, periodically because you don't want dirt or oil to um, get in the fibers and that because that could um, degrade the fibers and compromise the integrity of the swing. So you'll wash it in the washing machine and uh, hang it to dry. Um, the swing is so is so durable that it can be a little bit hard on clothing. So you don't want to wear your newest yoga pants in the swing. You'll want to wear older pants because it can wear out where there's pressure points, like the inner thighs in particular. So uh, talking more about the clothing that we wear in the yoga swing, what not to wear is uh, slick yoga pants because a slick nylon yoga pant on a slick parachute nylon could slide you right out of the swing. So instead, I recommend wearing natural fiber uh, pants, uh, or at least pants that feel like natural fiber. So it, it could be like a cotton or a hemp blend and with some um, lycra, or maybe a suplex, the, the synthetic fibers that feel like cotton. Those would work. Um, so the pants, you'll want them to be quite fitted and not loose or baggy. Same with your shirt, you'll want it to be quite fitted. So some of the things that we'll, we learn how to do in the swing, uh, put pressure on your underarms. You'll see, you can, some of the postures, you slide your arm all the way through and there's a little bit of pressure. So it can be useful to wear a t-shirt rather than a tank top. And, um, Let's look at some props that are useful in the swing. So props that I recommend and that I use every time I get in the swing now are two yoga blocks. The yoga blocks I have here are just a regular foam yoga blocks. I use them to help me get in the swing. I use them to do a handstand and I use them for a headstand. So to conclude this video, I'll demonstrate those postures. So I start out with the two yoga blocks underneath the swing. I stand on the blocks with my back to the swing. Hands wider than my hips, press straight down, and take a seat. So I'm not necessarily going to teach these postures, I'm just going to demo, but I did want to explain um, how to get into the swing using the yoga blocks. because. They're so useful. I didn't have to jump and miss the swing, possibly. I didn't have to fumble with the fabric of the swing. So now I'll go upside down and we'll look at headstand and handstand. So 
So when I first come upside down, I like to ground the crown of the head. Turn the blo I turn the block on high, press the crown of the head onto the block, and make contact with the earth. So if one block doesn't work for you, you could turn one block on low and the other block on medium, and that would make it a little bit taller. So headstand will fe can feel um, really relaxing in the swing. So another option, once I complete the headstand, is to move into handstand. Handstand, the blocks are on low, shoulder width apart, palm the block, and press arms straight. Push your sitting bones towards the sky. So here, then you're free to use your legs in any posture you like. So what the blocks do, just bend your elbows to release that, but what the blocks do is bring the floor closer to you. So to sit up, I just pull my legs towards me and reach for the middle handles, unwrap the legs, and lift through the heart. Big inhale to come up and let the head come up last. So those are just a few ideas of how to make the most of your yoga swing. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm Leela with bodyworker.org. Namaste.